and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We are a show that broadcasts live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 from the downtown studios of ThinkTech Hawaii in Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, we are a, a, a show that focuses primarily on successful individuals and companies in Hawaii uh, and helps share some of the various methods that individuals have used to accomplish uh, success. There's a lot of challenges, uh, particularly in Hawaii, but there are also a lot of successes. And we're here at this show today to talk a little bit about that. Today, I'm proud to have uh, a, another young professional, uh, one that is truly amazing. Uh, he's been in Hawaii for his entire life. We're going to share a little bit of that family history and background, but his involvement in the community is extensive and impressive. So I just want to welcome Kendrick Chang to the show today. It's great to have you here, Kendrick. Yes, thank you, Red, for having me. Um, just wanted to, you know, just share with the audience a little bit about, you know, your background. Um, your family has been in Hawaii for quite a while. Yes, I'm a fifth generation Chinese American. Actually, my first ancestor came from China, my great great grandfather, and um, basically he was a banker in China. And uh, when he came in the late 1800s, he actually got his Hawaiian citizenship. At the time, and then Hawaiian citizenship. Yes, yes. interesting. With, the, with yeah. the kingdom of Hawaii, and um, from there, um, he owned a store and a hostel right above the store in Chinatown. And then uh, my grandfather was actually the in the first graduating class of Farrington High School. Farrington. In the 19, yes, there's the a lot of uh, people that are well known that have graduated from Farrington. <laughs> yes, and my grandfather served in the. Navy, um, and actually during World War II was when um, he was part of the Corps of Engineers that built the runways in Guam in, in the Philippines. Wow. And when he came back after the war, he um, got into the construction industry, was a general contractor his entire career, and did, su did successfully, you know, and then he initially worked with a couple of construction companies, and then it went independent. Wow, good for him. And then your father also worked for a pretty well-known company, Oh, yes. Too, uh, right? My father was is the one who sold the coffee in the Red Bag Law. Yeah. Why Coffee Company, actually. Lion Coffee. Lion's Coffee. Yes. That's right. And that's a, a very well-known, well-recognized. <laughs> yeah, and the red color, yes. does that come from the Chinese? No. No, I, no that, that's <laughs> been the brand that Lion Coffee has. And then actually, it's part of Hawaii Coffee Company, so they do Lion Coffee and Kona Coffee. Okay. Very good. Well, it, your family's been here for a long time, yes. and you grew up whereabouts in Hawaii? Yes. Um, so, born and raised, and I went was born in Kapilani Hospital, and... Like most people. <laughs> yeah, born yes, here. like President... <laughs> oh, yeah, like, you know, and like President Obama, and then... Um, well, he was born here. He was born. <laughs> he was born at Kapilani <laughs> Hospital. Okay, we'll uh, go with that. All right. <laughs> and um, basically, I grew up in Hawaii. Kai went to Kaiser High School, and then from a very young age, I one involvement that I really um, got a lot out of was scouting. And then um, I was in Boy Scouts, and then I got my Eagle Scout when I was fifteen. And then wow. through my experience in scouting, I think. Um, I really got to see as far as how you can really get involved in the community. And from there, through the spirit of scouting and service, I mean, how much you can accomplish and how much you're able to really be part of the community. So yeah. I, that has been something that's been true to me. Now, we can talk a little bit about the Boy Scouts in a second, but Kaiser, when did you graduate from Kaiser? Yes, I graduated two years ago, class of 2015, Kaiser Sorry. High School. So and currently, um, I just finished my second year of undergraduate at the George Washington University. George Washington University, and that's where I'm kind of headed with this. And, and part of what I'm trying to share with the audience today is uh, how important it is uh, to a person's success in being involved and in doing things and getting that experience. I mean, you're, you're two years out of high school, you're in you're, your second year of, of college, but yet your experience and your background is very broad, and, and it's impressive. Now, Boy Scouts, tell me a little bit about the Boy Scouts. You're an Eagle Scout. I think we all have heard that, but right. it, it takes a lot to get there. Yeah, and actually I started Cub Scouts. So Cub Scouts, uh, when I was six, um, my soccer coach at the time, I played AYSL soccer, mm -hmm. um, 
he had an interest in scouting and he decided to start a Cub Scout pack. So I was a Tiger Cub from six and then eventually I moved on to Boy Scouts. And then basically um, with Boy Scouts, the transition from Cub Scouts, really Cub Scout is really a father-son mm. relationship. Mm. But once you hit Boy Scouts, when you're in middle and high school, it's really a boy-led you know, organization as far as what you do in the community. And they have different rankings, you know. Yes. Second, first. <laughs> yes. Different types of rankings yeah. within the Boy Scout. And then besides just the rank requirements, you also have to serve in leadership positions. Mm -hmm. And also, you have to get merit badges. So, you know, there's some requirement merit badges like um, emergency preparedness, first aid, really applicable skills that you wouldn't not necessarily get from just going through school. Right. No, and there's there's literally hundreds of different types of badges that you can earn. I was in the Boy Scouts too, <laughs> but I never made it to Eagle. Yes. I mean that that's a, a tough long road, you know, yeah. to make it to Eagle Scout. And you have to have a lot of different types of merit badges in order to get to yes. the Eagle level, right? Yeah. Do you remember how many badges you needed to have? Yeah, so actually to get Eagle, um, you need at least twenty one merit badges. I recall <laughs> I finish off with about 32 merit badges. 32. But the merit badges themselves take a lot of work. I mean, there's a lot of requirements that you have to do in order to earn that badge. Yes. But basically, I mean, the key component is really um, being in a good troop, your unit mm -hmm. organization. And I was very fortunate. My dad was an assistant scoutmaster in my Boy Scout troop at the time growing up. And actually, for my Boy Scout troop, we were based on Hawaii Kai, uh, where we were. We were are and were sponsored by the Hawaii Kai Lions Club. And actually, my year, when I got my Eagle Scout, there were seven fellow Boy Scouts in my trip at the time that were the same age. And we all got our Eagle Scouts within a two-year period. Wow. So I think it's just basically having a united group that was motivated. And with that, I think the final key requirement is the Eagle Scout project, which basically you have to um, plan and execute a community service project on your own. and what I did was um, the old White Loopy Elementary School, which was closed down by the DOE. Um, so I came in in 2012, and then at the time, that was when the city parks department took over, and then they needed to do some refurbishing and enhancement and repainting in their classrooms. So that was my Eagle Scout project. Right, and did, you had help to do some of this, right? <laughs> yes, um, basically it was, you know, my Boy Scout troop were the primary volunteers, and we were, Fortunate that we were able to finish the project in one day, but basically, Eagle Scout project. Every scout kind of can find what they want, and basically, <clears throat> it's really up to them. It's not where the your scout master or whoever's above you is telling you, directing you. They're there to guide you, but in the end, it's really up to the scout right. to finish the project. They don't force you in any one direction. You have to make that choice yourself. Yes. Yeah. And I guess one of the side benefits of this, if not a primary benefit, is that you really get engaged with the community. I mean, you learned an awful lot during this process in Hawaii Kai by yeah. going through the scouting program. Yes, um, particularly um, there are two community service projects that I've done during my time in scouting, and both of them kind of developed into something. One was um, with Level Hawaii Kai Hui, a conservation nonprofit out in Hawaii, kind of East Honolulu, and um, one of my fellow scouts who got who was doing his Eagle Scout project did it at at the organization's nursery, and that's how I met it, their president Elizabeth Riley, who has since has been such a great mentor to me. And with that, um, that's how I started forming a relationship with her. And then eventually, through Kaiser High School, um, there were other you know club projects that we ended up. Partnering with local Hawaii Kai Hui and doing it at their, um, at their parcels that they're working to conserve and preserve, and also the other key project was um, Representative Jean Ward um, does a yearly um, Earth Day cleanup along the Kiwi coastline. Right. I, I've seen that and I've heard about it. Yeah. Yes. And so you participated in that uh, yes, every year. Yes, true scouting and also. Um, Eventually, in my high school years, I ended up interning for the representative in his office, and primarily I was focused on his constituent work and community well, see, And that's projects. just another way of getting engaged with yeah. the community, or at least being aware of it, right. is by, you know, 
He's a representative out in Waikai, and you learned about yeah. a lot of the issues that, that he was involved in as well. Yeah, and no, I was fortunate that in high school at the time they had an internship program for public high school students to intern under their respective representative or state senator within their district. And um, representative, or I call him Gene now, <laughs> was very gracious at the time. And then um, from there, basically, you know, I got to learn both the grassroots, but also the policy level. Right, which is important. Job. It's uh, how the sausage is actually made. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's an eye-opening experience, right. isn't it? Yes. <laughs> um, you know, and so you, you went through the Boy Scout program. You were with Kaiser. Um, you've done some of these community projects right. that were very worthwhile. All of that helped you, I guess, in your application for George Washington University, right? I mean, that all comes into play. Yeah, no, I mean, um, for someone who was always interested in, you know, civil engagement, and actually, um, I was always, my dream from high school was to, you know, eventually become a lawyer, and that's still my plan now. And I had a school field trip um, in middle school to Washington DC and I in middle school yes in middle school eighth wow. grade Jeez. and I actually fell in love with the DC area in Washington DC and when it came time applying for colleges I feel it was either I go to UH or I go to a institution in Washington DC and then I was lucky that the George Washington University yeah. accepted me now when you went over there was it during the winter time no well actually yeah I did experience my first okay, winter yeah, because it gets cold over there yeah, in winter before, time Fortunately, in December, you know, I can, a one month winter break, so I come back home. <laughs> <laughs> That's all out. Yes. <laughs> and I go back in the code again. Yeah. Well, and so you, you started really thinking about going to college on the mainland, on, in the East Coast, I yes. guess in middle school. Well, actually, I would say, you know, middle school was more of just a dream because I really didn't know if, you know, because it's very competitive as far as, you know, just applying oh, yeah. admissions. Um, I think the two key things for me when it came to applying during my senior year of high school was one was the academic rigor and curriculum that Kaiser High School offers. Kaiser mm -hmm. High School offers the International Baccalaureate program, which I was in, and I took college level courses, and it was really part of a program, which includes also writing a 4,000 word research essay. Holy moly. Yes. That's a lot of writing. <laughs> You know, that, that's impressive. And um, real quickly, because we've got to go on break, but what was the title of that 4,000-word essay? Oh, I forgot the title, but it was the, about um, Hawaiian history and land uh, development. Uh, land development. Okay, so you're, you're still yes, focused and... on that land issue side. That's great. Yeah. But we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back shortly. We're going to talk more about George Washington and your future law plan. Yeah. This is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're here today talking with Kedrick Chang, who is a, a successful young uh, entrepreneur or, or successful uh, student uh, that's attending George Washington University. Um, and we're going to learn more about what his plans are for the future here at, right after the break. Aloha, I'm Tim Apichaw, host for Moving Hawaii Forward, a show dedicated to transportation issues and traffic. We identify those areas where we do have problems in the state, but also the show is dedicated to trying to find solutions, not just detail our problems. So join me every other Tuesday on Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm Tim Apicella. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Aloha and welcome back to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Today we're talking with Kendrick Chang, who is on home break, or summer break from George Washington University, but he was born and raised in Hawaii, graduated from Kaiser High School, and, and has done a, a lot of community engagement over the years. Uh, and, and he's going to be sharing with us a little bit now about uh, you know, George Washington University, and uh, you've got future plans to go to law eventually, yeah. or law school. Yeah, and actually, I do want to wind back as, you know, we were talking earlier about, you know, basically my adolescent high school years mm. as far as being involved in the community through scouting, representing Ward, and also just in school. And I think with all that combined, I really built an interest in land use right. issues and development and, you know, environmental rights. And I think 
the prime came right after I graduated from Kaiser High School. It was May 2015, and Elizabeth Riley at the time, who, who came to my graduation, um, that's when she first shared with me about um, that she and Lebo Hui Kai Hui, partnering with the Trust for Public Land, were working to preserve the Kiwi coastline. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that has been something in the works. And even though that uh, for, for the, the audience that may not have a background sure. in some of the Hawaii Kai issues, explain to me uh, or to the audience what that coastline issue is. Yeah, so basically the Kiwi coastline, which is adjacent, adjacent to Sandy Beach and Makapu'u. And it's the land right yes, in the middle. Right, yeah. on the southeastern tip on Oahu. Right. Actually, Henry J. Kaiser, when he developed Waikiki, he actually envisioned that coastal front to be potentially the second Waikiki by building a hotel resort. And the community at the time, Hawaii was really built as a residential community, and a lot of people did not want to have another commercial beachfront in that area. And um, successfully over the years from the Safe Sandy Beach movement, one by one, they were able to preserve from Sandy Beach to the Kiwi Makai Lands, which is along the ocean. And then the last parcel was the Kiwi Malkalan, so basically 180 acres right along that mountainside of Kiwi, partnering next to Sandy Beach and Makapu, a very beautiful area. And at the time when it came around 2015 was when basically the land was up for sale because the previous landowner who wanted to develop it um, had to sell it because it was a land court. Mm -hmm. And um, Libo Hawaii Kaihui stepped in and said, you know, if it, this was our opportunity to purchase the land and keep it preservation forever instead of keep fighting from one development to the next. So it was really a proactive step. And I got involved during the last part, which was basically the state and the city partnered and gave um, $3.5 million combined. But we needed the remaining 500000 to finish out what needed and it, it was kind of part where, from the community side, it's kind of showing the community really wants to be part of this. And the city and the state, respectively, they want to show, see that if they're showing in money, that the community is actually really wants that to go through. So that's what happened. And basically... You protected it. Yeah, we, it was within a three-month period. You know, I was pretty much the sign-waving captain, mm -hmm. did a couple media appearances and um, basically did a lot of administrative and grassroots campaigning side and really the beautiful part of that effort was where you would see people from all different sides I mean there's a lot of issues that I found in my community that people that were part of the community campaign they were on different sides in the past mm. but when it came to an issue that everyone had a connection to growing up or just living in Hawaii Kai they all came together and wanted to preserve that parcel. That's great. And so you were able to raise that money and, and close the deal. Yes. Yeah, very good. And it's that type of leadership and engagement that has really helped round you out as a, a truly successful uh, young professional. Uh, it, the experience like that is, is something that not very many people have, yeah. even, even older people. Yeah, no, and I think um, the key aspect for me just coming, going out of it was really just interact and working with all different people of diverse backgrounds. You have people from the grassroots side that they're out there. Mm -hmm. They don't have they don't have the personal fortune to give five hundred thousand, but they were willing to invest time as far as sign waving, stuffing envelopes, among other activities. And there's those who may not have the time but they're able to throw in money. And we had one fortunate donor, Randy Ching, who actually was a high school teacher and very involved in the environmental community in this year, Hawaii, he gave a hundred thousand dollars. Wow, I didn't know we paid our teachers that well. <laughs> <laughs> so no, that's uh, it, it's good, but you get to meet those people, you get to work with the community, yeah. you can see how they all come together, and you can you know get a good idea of how powerful that can be when it's done correctly. Yes. Now, just out of curiosity, uh, Kendrick. What are they planning on doing? Are they going to leave it totally undeveloped? Or are they going to make a park out of it someday? Or what, what's the plans um, for that area? Do you have any idea? The plan, because um, even though the money was raised back in the summer of 2015, it took a year and a half for the purchase agreement to finally be finalized. And that was announced back in April of this year in 2017. And I'm still part of Level Hawaii Kaikui as a youth advisor that they asked Elizabeth Riley and the organization asked me to stay on to help them not only on Katie, but other projects for our organization. And 
they're still in the works and trying to present a plan, but basically the key is to just keep in preservation. And I think that is what the community wants. We don't, we want to respect the community's wish is that, you know, if we're not gonna allow anyone to develop, you know, let's keep it that way. Right, well, that's very good. Uh, and then I guess as we were, you know, ending the first part and transitioning to the break, uh, we kind of mentioned that you were planning on going into law school, but it's, uh, your interest in law is in what area? Yes, yeah, so I think with the Kiwi campaign, I saw how much can be done, how much land in Hawaii is very scarce. And, you know, especially in Oahu right now, we see um, there's a need for affordable housing, there's a need for to help the homeless. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, we want to protect and preserve our pristine coastlines and respective parcels on Oahu that really means they're not only to different communities, but also makes us very um, attractive to, to the tourism market. And, you know, we have a lot of balancing out that needs to happen in the coming years. And I think just for my experience, just seeing the different development and environment issues that has gone in, in, in the East Oahu community, that's why I'm looking at you know land use law as a possible specialty and zoning. Right, and you know certainly we all can appreciate the fact that we're on an island. Right, and you know as the population grows, uh, and as commercial enterprise grows, right. you know land is becoming a scarce resource, and yeah. so you know and it's not just on Oahu. I mean there are issues like this on every island. Yeah, and so this sounds like a, a very interesting opportunity for you. Uh, and I would, you know, the law school you're planning on going to here is local, right? Well, uh, I, I think in the end, I want to practice land use law and zoning in Hawaii. So um, right now, I would look, I'm considering returning law school, but I mean, I haven't really self because I still got another two more years, right. and I can still decide maybe I want to get a one or two more years of professional experience before going mm -hmm. to law school. So I haven't really picked out a specific path, but I think regardless of my career path, I want to be back home one day and really being in, involved as far as land use policy and how we can make our state beautiful, but at the same time, a welcoming state that can serve the housing and commercial needs of everyone. You know, it, I mean, that's an awful, that's a big mouthful. I mean, there's a, yeah. a lot involved in that, and you know, there's going to be a lot of opposing positions right. on that. So you're picking a very interesting area to get into. Yeah, but you know, we got both big picture, like, you know, big housing, you know, in Kaka'ako or even in Ko'olina and on the west side of Oahu, but we also even have more minute, you know, land use issues, especially in residential communities when it comes to, you know, Airbnb and rentals and even public access to beaches like yeah. Port Lock and Kahala. Which are two big issues right. that are, you know, being addressed or at least discussed in Hawaii. Yeah, time. but I think there's a lot, of, you know, as far as land use access zoning that, I mean, right now, Hawaii, we got to really figure out not only what our priorities are, but you know, how are we able to address them in a way that will bring everyone together. And I think at times it's very easy to just look at to the other side and say that, oh, you know, they're not really having their best interests and, you know, let's keep fighting. But other times, there are other ways and issues that you can come around and find common ground and where everyone can win in the end. And that's where I got that experience from the Kiwi Coastline and Malcolm Land's preservation effort. And mm -hmm. I, I think that's an approach that we need, sometimes need to take a step back and recognize that, you know, we may all have different, you know, plans. We may all have different goals, but in the end, we all want to live in Hawaii. And yeah. we want to enjoy the environment, yeah. and we want to have the, the peaceful type of um, lifestyle right. that living in Hawaii should bring us. Yes. You know, um, yeah, it's a, it's a great thought, and uh, I'm looking forward to you making that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. Um, let me see, what else, uh, you know, so you're in your second year at George Washington yes. now. Um, what are some of the big differences that, uh, as a student, you know, and there's a lot of parents out here whose, um, you know, daughters and sons are planning on going off to college here soon. Um, you know, we're in the summer and the, the college classes may start in August or September. Yes. So, you know, when you made that transition to George Washington, which is about as far away as you can get right. from Hawaii, <laughs> 
Uh, you know, right. What were some of the big challenges that you had that, that you had to address? Well, I think it's just the change in lifestyle. I think those who decides to go to the mainland for college, they want a different experience. And it really depends on where they went. I was fortunate when I went to GW that um, yeah, there's a Hawaii club. And two years later, I'm now the vice president of the club. So <laughs> That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's just where, you know, you got to pick areas, you know, as a stu student, as a freshman student, is which areas do you want to explore where you want to be independent from maybe what you're comfortable back home. But at the same time, what other areas, like maybe food or dancing to hula, that you want to still maintain, you know, that experience while you're still away. And I guess in your case, you were able to find that. But yes. You, but did they find you or did you find them? Uh, I think both. Um, with the Hawaii Club, I was very fortunate that a couple upperclassmen friends that are from from Hawaii and they really welcomed me into the Hawaii Club That's immediately. And at the same time, I think it's just exploring your options. Like at GW, because we're in the center of DC, I think the special thing is doing internships during the semester. And this past semester, I interned at the Trust for Public Land, and that's the same organization back in their Hawaii branch. They were instrumental in helping secure the Kiwi coastline, and I was able to get the experience in seeing the other side of what the Trust for Public Land does in their DC office. That's good. So there you are, back in that land, uh, legal <laughs> land area yes. again. That, that's great. And, and we're going to be wrapping up here in about one minute. Um, and so I guess what I'm hearing is that when these students are going to college on the mainland, it's good for them to explore all the different options right. and see, you know, the different areas that yeah. they can get engaged with and, right. and you know, contribute to yeah. uh, at the university. You know, and don't wait. If they don't come to you, you go to them. Right. You start looking. Yeah. You know, and sometimes that's the... Not an easy thing to do, but obviously has worked well for you. Yeah, and I think the key for me throughout my entire life is that to sometimes get out of your comfort zone. And even like when it comes to the QB coastline, there were other individuals that were part of the effort that, based on what I read in the newspaper or what I heard about them in the past, I like I have completely different mm. opinions on other issues. But when it came time to come together, now they're you know we're friends with each other and we talk. And you know there are many other areas. You know you just you know have your separate opinions, but I think just being able to reach out and have the diversity and understanding all different perspectives and um, philosophies, I think that's the key. That's a very mature attitude to have, and, and we can certainly use more of that here in Hawaii. Right. So, uh, Kendrick, congratulations. Uh, I, there's no question in my mind that you're going to be very successful in your career. Uh, so thank you for being on the show. Uh, and enjoy the weather, because when you get back to D.C., it's going to be hot. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. I was here today with Kendrick Chang, who is sharing with us um, his experiences in Hawaii Kai, growing up, graduating from Kaiser High School, and then moving on to George Washington University. Uh, an amazing young man that I think has a very bright future here in Hawaii or, or wherever he ends up. Uh, we broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, aloha.